Alright, and welcome to the show. On this day, January 9th, 2023, I am Michael Turpin. Okay, so a lot to jump into today. We'll talk a little Speaker McCarthy and all the McCarthyisms and kind of give another look into the madness that was last week. Pro football has officially wrapped up their 2022-2023 season, and the New York Giants are in the mix, thank you to Mr. Brian Dayball. More importantly, closer to home, we will talk to Mar Hamlin and how not only a city, not only a state, and a country, but the entire world came together for this young man. Before we jump in, let's take a second. Like, subscribe, ring our bell so you're the first to receive all of our giveaways and special promotions for our new year. Now, let's talk what we are missing in our pockets due to Christmas, and that is cash. I want everyone to think about something for a second, because this is how cash works. So, I went on a trip last week, or whatever, it was around Christmas, with my in-laws, um, and my in-laws are in the, in the market for a new car. And we got in the conversation about a new car, you know, I'm just like my father-in-law, I, I am very conscious about my investments and, and what have you. Um, he... Just like me, you know, we're increasingly ambivalent about, you know, an automobile and the investment and what you're going to get back on it because you're never going to get your money back, you know, realistically never. In the last 30 years, the car industry has turned completely upside down. Um, my father in 1978 brought a, uh, a Chevy Camaro um, for 6200 bucks, completely off the lot, you know, less than, I remember him always saying he had eight, eight miles on it when he brought it home. Anyway. You take a $50 bill, it's called a banknote. Take it to a restaurant and you pay dinner with it. That restaurant owner takes that $50 bill. He goes, he pays his laundry, pays to get his laundry done. The laundry owner then takes that $50 bill, he pays the barber. Barber then takes the $50 bill, he pays, he goes and he gets groceries, he does shopping with it, right? An unlimited number of payments, that $50 bill is still $50. It has a fulfillment in it of purposes to everyone who uses it, right? And realistically, it's, it never changes. Okay. Let's go back to the restaurant for a second. And you used your bank card. I am always fighting with different bank users and transaction fees and all that stuff for, for what I do, right? Um, let's just take, okay, so you go to the restaurant, and you use your card, and you swipe it. You're going to have 3%, maybe, right, in the $50, that's one and a half bucks. So every time we, let's look at the same transactions, the restaurant to the barber to the laundry to the go shopping, the grocery store, hundred, what, a buck 50 so that Fifty dollars is not fifty dollars anymore. That fifty dollars is officially, we'll say, one fifty times four, five uses, six to seven dollars. So it's that fifty dollars isn't fifty dollars anymore. It's actually uh, forty six or forty three fifty. You know. Let's go even further. Thirty transactions. You're gonna have five dollars left on the whole entire $50, thanks to digital transactions, right? Just a way to think about how cash is going in in the United States and in our society, because it's kind of getting a little bit scary, right? Just a, just a different way to look at it, right? Let's go back to purchasing or leasing a vehicle. How many hands will that vehicle switch in its lifetime? Our first vehicle that we bought was in 2011 that we bought jointly, right? It was a 2008 Chevy Tahoe. We bought it for $40,000 used, of course. We had it for two years. We paid $550 a month on it, and we ended up paying $14,000, plus all the fees and transactions and blah, blah, blah. Everyone local had to get their hand in the mix of that transaction until we traded the vehicle in on a newer model. So when that vehicle first hit the lot, it sold for $65,000 somewhere in the bank sphere, okay, that Chevy Tahoe in the first three years of its existence, and honestly, the thing's worth maybe has, what, 
$25,000 worth of parts on it, okay? It made $105,000 in three years. According to the Federal Trade Commission, a vehicle is sold five times in its lifetime on average at a depreciated value. Let's use that Tahoe once again as an example. So, sixty-five to 40000 for a point of concept, right? That $65,000 vehicle will make $161,000 in its lifetime. That's absolutely insane. That's absolutely insane. That's why you can drive anywhere in the country and you see buy here, pay here, shark car lots anywhere in the United States because you get a vehicle and you can go to auctions and the one vehicle is made, its worth is, you know, $30,000. It's it's made double, if not triple, its true value when it's when it's sold. And then at the end of the whole entire thing, you're coming home and, and you're buying it at, at that value. What is going on, right? And it's only getting worse. It is only getting worse. When we are looking for automobiles in this market, in this crazy market that we can't get anything, nobody can get anything, right? <laughs> it's not our fault. Uh, it is our fault because, once again, voting has consequences. But... Um, it, 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 the, but we're the ones that have to pay for it, no matter what, right? It's crazy how it works. I don't know. It's an interesting perspective on what the heck is going on and what is going on in the world at the moment. So just an interesting way of looking at it. All right, moving on. One of the most popular professional sporting leagues has finished its season. Can't say the name because I'll get copyrighted. Um, has finished its season last night. When the pack lost to the Lions 2016. Old Lions, I tell you, they're going to be a force to, dealt with, to deal with in the next five years. Just like as the Bills are now. Five years ago, the Bills, are, uh, uh, the Bills were, were up and coming. You know, Josh Allen was um, throwing the ball from the one to the, to the, from one end of the field to the other. And, uh, uh, and look where he is now. He's, he's the MVP of the league. One of the most popular stories in our, in our news are our local friend, Damar Hamlin. Everyone felt the pain of this young man this last week throughout the entire world. It wasn't just a Buffalo thing. It wasn't just a New York State thing. It wasn't just an Ohio thing. It wasn't just a regional thing. It wasn't just a United States thing. I tell you what, it was felt across the world. And everyone, every single person that is worth talking about did the right thing, right? I can't say everybody. You know, there's the 1% of the 1% that are just turds, you know, there was the uh, people that said there was conspiracy and, you know, all that mess. I'm not even going to bring it up because it was just, it was bullarky, but, um, but we're, we're, the whole entire world came together and uh, the Bills went out and from the first kickoff, um, they, they proved, um, they proved who, who was, who was in charge of the game. It was a great game. I tell you what, the Bills won one for you, buddy. I tell you what. Um, one thing about this compassion and love for this young man did show. There is a lack of racism in our society throughout the world as we all prayed for this young man to recover. Yes, once again, I agree there were those lost their ever-loving mind with conspiracy theories about COVID shots and if he really was hurt. But, you know, as I said from the beginning, and I've said it a lot on this show, uh, people are not happy unless they're complaining or bringing something stupid up, right? Because that's just how it works. But uh, this one's for you, DeMar Hanlon. Can't wait to see you back on the sidelines. Hopefully one day back on the field. That story itself, um, it's a good one, right? It really shows the resilience of, of Western New York. We've been dealing with Eastern New York as long as, you know, as long as Eastern New York has been around. Um, as long as taxes, you know, because Eastern New York is the is the city, and you got Central New York, which is forgotten about. You have Utica and 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 all that mess. Um, Utica is 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 a dumpster fire. Um, I was at uh, a big box store in Utica last week, um, and uh, an individual. So I'm at a grocery, not a grocery store. I'm at a uh, a big box fast food place, right? I hand the girl. I think my total was like 16.30, like 16.35, we'll say. So I hand the girl a 20 and 35 cents, right? 
no, no, it was, it was a 20, it was a one and 35 cents just to get a five back, right? And so you would think I blew the, the cash register's mind. You would think I blew, blew, that, blew that person's mind. Um, they went, and they, the person that was before me, you know, that person was screaming at, at that customer. Um, so when I came up, I, I, was, I was just trying to give it, I was very polite. I was very direct. I was, I was trying to be as open and understandable as possible. I didn't want to be another person to get to get screamed at at the at the anyway. So once again, I hand the person twenty dollars, a one dollar and thirty five cents, hoping to receive back a thirty five cents, you know, or uh, five dollars, right? Um, the person gets out, gets out their 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 iPhone, punches it in for some reason punches the total, then punches uh, 0.895, which tax in New York State is is 8.75, or 0.80875, however you want to look at it or question it. Um, So it wasn't even the taxes that they were putting in to the equation. Then uh, opens the register, slams it, gets out their cell phone again, opens the register again, and hands me $6. <laughs> and at this point, um, I, I ask for my receipt. I get my receipt, and I turn and walk away. I'm looking at my receipt, because I just want to make sure I'm correct before, <laughs> um, but before I, I, I start intervening correct so um i was right and uh you know i i I didn't make anything of it i I just you know it is what it is um and i i put it on social media and i put it on the social verse because i i really wanted to see how people react and you know some people attack me for bringing it up and i like listen i am i'm making i'm making a point that yes as a a parent, father of a special needs child, uh, I, I like to be very kind and considerate to these individuals that have a tough time with learning and social interactions, right? I think it's very crucial for our society pushing forward, right? We need to be, we need to be very sensitive towards these individuals. But if they have a tough time, number one, reading, Number two, having social interactions. You don't, as a manager, you don't put them as the frontline face of your establishment. And that's my whole entire point, right? As um, most that dealt, you know, and and got involved in the conversation said the exact same thing, you know, Um, because it just, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's kind of, uh, that's, that's, uh, the no child left behind uh, mentality, because that's where we are. We we we're, we're le- not only we're we're leaving the ch- children behind because we're not pushing them, um, but we're leaving our society, our, our our ability for for our society to function behind, um, because we're going to all this this wokeness, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be the end of us. Um, can't say that enough. But as you know, Western New York and uh, pays for Eastern New York, and it is uh, it is that, and that's how it's going to work. Let's dive into speakerisms and into this week's bullcrap. So once again, a bushel of lawmakers wanted some basic things in the House and held their vote for ransom. Okay. At first, I kind of agreed with the masses, you know, that they're kind of upset that the Republicans can't get their head from the rear end and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, there's a group of guys and girls in the in the house that, you know, just can't agree and they're just being stubborn, right? I mean, I kind of agree with that, right? And as everyone knows, I am as down the middle as you come, you know? I, I don't want to ever I, – I want to always be – unbiased because it's just the way to go i think you're just a lot more happier as a person if you're unbiased if you go one extreme or or another um you're you're not gonna be able to see both sides of the story and you're gonna be less empathetic towards what people think and feel right um so i I, at first i kind of agreed with them and i kind of thought back okay well what are they asking for 
right? And this is kind of a part that's kind of bull crap because this is stuff that we should all be asking for. Everyone should be asking for. We should be holding anybody ransom, right? So what do the rebels really want? Number one, they want term limits. I cannot say how much this should be preached at every news outlet every single day. Term limits, term limits, term limits, term limits. I, I, and we'll get into this later. Um, capping the debt ceiling. How come everyone in the United States as a lower class and middle class individual has to balance their, their wallet, but lawmakers don't have to? I mean, they're, they're millionaires as it is. How, what are they getting out of this besides destroying our country? It's crazy. Um, time to actually read. They get 72 to 96 hours. I think it's capped at 72. Um, 72 hours to read these spending bills that come through. Remember, I'm not an individual. I didn't study government. I know the basics of the basics. I spent my time in the military. So you guys out there that get crazy on what I should know, what I do know, and my blah, 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 blah. You're, you're, you're speaking out your rear end because I know enough to be dangerous, and I am right in my stance in the details, I might not be, but I'm right in the in my stance. Anyway, so um, taking power from the speaker. Oh, I mean, I, I wish we had this for the previous uh, four years. Um, and you know, there's other heavy ones, but those are those are basically the big ones. Okay, so let's look at these one at a time. Term limits. <laughs> wow. You can look at the individuals on Twitter in the face verse losing their minds over this, okay? I I mean, independents have come unglued, you know, with these representatives pressing on term limits. Most politicians are millionaires off the back of working individuals. And, you know, I'm kind of flex here because I am a working individual, worked with my hands my whole entire life. I can even say... Union individuals are working people. Um, I, the people are working. The unions don't work. Uh, the unions are, I mean, we needed unions in the 20s and the 30s of last century um, when we were allowing 15-year-olds to work 36 hours straight, you know. And people that say that never worked on the flight line in the military. I'm just saying out loud. But anyway, um, all these these representatives in the house they have one hundred thirty five thousand dollars salaries, but somehow are millionaires. So, you know, once again, I, I can say that till I'm blue in the face. Anyway, okay. So, in business, you have a it's something called gap. It's a way of accounting for your business and every dollar or penny that really comes in. It's gap G A A P general accepted accounting principles. Um, just like the automobile analogy. Um, house ways to account for depreciation um, and you have four ways of depreciation in business you have straight line you have declining balance um, units of production and uh, some of the years digit method straight line of course is always the best a perfect analogy for this would be um, you get you buy a lawnmower to mow your lawn every year it depreciates a certain amount um, until you buy a lawnmower for ten thousand dollars. You know you're going to sell it in four years for five thousand dollars. Every year it depreciates for a certain percent until that fourth year, um, it's completely depreciated completely, and you sell it for five thousand dollars. And the the difference is uh, is is written off on your taxes, right? So, um, of course, declining balance being you know the most popular and it's the easiest to use. Um, the point is, when doing business, we will not keep things around for long. Software becomes outdated, hinges become worn, um, bolts become, you know, stripped out, and it, it honestly, things become way too expensive to maintain. Why do we keep these people in office for 40 years? 40 to 50 years, and they do nothing but get on TV and lie to us over and over and over again. We have 100 million people on Medicare in our country. 100 million. That's reported as from Axios last month, December 
of 2022. 100 million people are enrolled in Medicare. That's up 17% from the year prior. 17%. Last, two years ago, December 2021, we were sitting at 83 million people. It's time to get fresh new faces in making laws and making relationships. The only way people in the middle class are suffering because we keep making rules, we keep making laws instead of following the laws that we have. The whole point we have, whole reason we have gun problems in our country because we're not enforcing the laws that we have, we're trying to make new ones to put on top of them. Enforce the ones you have. Because the only people that ever get in trouble with laws that you don't enforce or laws that you remake when we're making new laws are the people that follow the laws. You're making new laws to, to beat down on the people that aren't following laws and then you're wondering why everything is completely out of whack. And then on the back end, you give yourself a raise. What sense does that make? We have 77 million people in our, 77 million of our 340 million are high school and lower, high school to birth, 77 million. That means we only have about 150 million people. I'm being very liberal with that number. 150 million people working or capable of working. That doesn't mean that they're working. 150 million people. 150 million people. I can't say that enough. You have, you have less than half the people. You have, you have about maybe a third of the people, a little less than a third of the people working and paying taxes. The problem isn't the hire. The problem is the spending. The problem is term limits. The problem is capping the debt ceiling. The problem is these spending bills. The problem are the speaker being so entrenched in financial politics that the hardworking people of the United States don't see their return on their investments. And you wonder why drinking, drug use, and gambling is through the roof. People are just trying to get away. They're trying to get some, just touch that sense of reality that we have left. What is going on? That is a different perspective to all this BS that's going on. Just give it a second. Instead of throwing your hands up in the air and acting like a baby and complaining, how about we just listen to what they have to say? How about it? Have a little empathy and compassion to what they have to say. Maybe they weren't just whining and complaining. We have plenty of people that do nothing but whine and complain. Why can't we just give them a, give them a chance? I get it. You know what? I absolutely do. I have, in my career, dealt with plenty of people that do nothing but whine and complain. What have you presented? What have you given? What have you made? And the answer is nothing. The answer is nothing. Give it a chance. See what they have to say. What did hurt you? You didn't lose anything. Nobody lost anything. Nobody lost anything. If anything, the American people won when they held out and they're going to hold McCarthy's hand to the fire. American people won just a little bit. Not a lot, but it's not about winning... It's not about winning the fights, it's about winning the war. That's how it works, right? That's how it works. You know, I got a lot to say, and I appreciate everyone that listens. We've got a lot going on. We've got a lot of really great things happening. Appreciate everyone again for tuning in. Got another show coming up here by the end of the week. We'll have it posted. A lot of great things happening. Got a lot of giveaways. And we also have a lot of... Love for the Buffalo Bills and DeMar Hamlin. Once again, my, my friend, I hope the best for you, the best for your family. 
and the best for the Buffalo Bills because I tell you what, they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. You can take that one to the bank, Jack. Take it to the bank. I tell you what. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. We'll talk to you soon.